Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the Cape Cobra from Southern Africa. Please remember to like and subscribe. Now let's get right into it. Fact 1. Southern Africa The Cape Cobra is a native species only found in Southern Africa. Here is a map of their distribution. You can see, they don't venture very far. They're really located in this southwestern corner of Africa, spanning across four different countries. The Cape Cobra is one of the most venomous snakes in this region, and as such is widely feared. The Cape Cobra is similar to other cobras that it has a cape and a hood around its head, and when it stands up, you can see it fully formed. This species of snakes is quite common in Southern Africa and in fact, their incidence of people whose cars or planes are infested with this kind of snake and come out unexpectedly which really scares the passengers and drivers or pilots. The Cape Cobra is a endemic species within Southern Africa and so far it has not been really introduced anywhere else in the world and so you will only find them in the southwestern African continent. Right, let's get into the next fact. Fact 2. Floating on water. This is a very unique snake. Here is a picture of this snake floating and swimming on water. And the way it could stay afloat is because it inhales as much air as possible to inflate its lungs, which is really the length of its body, essentially acting as like a balloon. And when they do that and go on the water, they are able to swim on top of the water quite easily. I think it's extremely clever because humans cannot do something like that. As much air as we want to inhale, we will never be able to float on the water like a balloon. But with the different anatomy of the snakes, they are able to do this and quickly transform themselves into a buoyant animal and go across different lakes and rivers with ease. They must have learned this technique throughout ages of generations and generations of their cobra snakes so that they're able to cross rivers and lakes and expand their territories or to hunt for different animals and creatures. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 3. Colors vary. It is very interesting that the Cape Cobra doesn't actually have a uniform color. Some Cape Cobras are like this, of brown color. Other Cape Cobras, are what you saw earlier sections, are more of an orange gold color. I think the reason why the colors are not exactly uniform is because their skin helps them blend into the environment. And as we'll get into the next few sections, these Cobras survive in a wide variety of environments. They're not like some typical animals where they only choose one type of environment or climate to stay in and remain there. The Cape Cobra is widely distributed across different climate zones and different environmental regions. And so they need to learn to adapt to the various environments that they thrive in. And if you are a brown color snake, and yet all around you is the golden savanna grass, you're gonna stand out too much. And so they have evolved to blend in with their environment as much as possible. Cool, let's get into the next fact. Fact four, born independent. Similar to all the snakes out there in the world, when the cobra snake hatches from its egg, it is fully independent right from birth. This means that they do not rely on the parent to survive right after birth. The tiny snakes immediately began foraging and hunting for food, as if it was a miniature adult. I think it's incredible, and this is not actually limited to the Cape Cobra. Most snakes are like this. And the problem with the Cape Cobra is that it is a very fierce hunter. And so if an adult Cape Cobra comes across a newly hatched Cape Cobra, they will eat it because there is no relation between 
family or parent and child. As soon as the cape cobra is born from its egg, it is immediately on its own. I think it's very interesting that snakes are so independent right away and do not need any kind of reliance on their parents to survive. That natural instinct to begin hunting and eating right away is incredible and I think it really helps their survival because they don't have a sort of a weak stage if you will where they're completely incapacitated or completely reliant on their parents to feed them. They can immediately start slithering through their environment and functioning as if they were adults. All right, let's get to the next and final fact. Fact five, varied environment. As I mentioned in the previous section, the Cape Cobra doesn't just confine itself in one environment. They thrive in the Kalahari Desert, the various bushlands in Southern Africa, tall grassy areas, tropical areas, forested areas, really any areas you can think of in Southern West Africa. They're not picky about the environment and they eat the creatures or animals that are found in those environments. This kind of ability to adapt to varied environments and survive and thrive is pretty incredible and probably why the Cape Cobra is not endangered at all. They're more of a common animal in this area than something that is hard to see or difficult to capture. If an animal is too dependent on a specific factor in the environment or too reliant on a specific food, they're gonna be in danger of extinction simply because things change all the time and environments change all the time, especially our climates. And if things change and they can't adapt, they will die and be extinct. Whereas the Cape Cobra is likely going to continue adapting to new environments and simply continue to survive. Alright, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.